Well, um, I mean, we, uh, I mean, Robert, you you came up with the title, didn't you? How much is enough? Um, and then the book kind of uh, sort of grew out of that. Um, yes, yeah, that, that's right. Uh, I think uh, you know there was there'd been um, this slump, the two thousand and eight crisis, and and um, um, I'd been working on 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 Keynes for a long time, and so I thought, well, um, here we are in another slump. And Keynes had written this essay, Economic Possibilities mm. for Our Grandchildren, um, in 1930, which looked beyond the slump, said, what, what are the long-term prospects for our grandchildren? And so I guess I thought, um, well, it'd be, um, it'd be fun to, to repeat that exercise, and again in, in a slump, and then looking forward to what mm. we could expect, especially in view of the fact that some of Keynes's predictions had turned out to be um, not very accurate. For example, he thought we'd all be working much less mm. uh, now than in fact we are, um, because we'd be so much richer. So there were things Keynes got wrong. So there was that broader thing um, um, of, of uh, looking at our, our long-term future and then th trying to work out, you know, to improve on Keynes in a way. Yes. But difficult though that is. But what was really striking about Keynes's essay is that he, he was right about some things, but very wrong on others. So he was, you know, remarkably spot on on incomes, that they have risen pretty much in line with his prediction. But then the problem was, well, why haven't we stopped working to the degree he thought we would? Yes. Um, and there, I think we came up with a number of answers to that. I mean, one of them was he underestimated insatiability. Um, uh, and another was that he didn't really take into account um, uh, who controlled the work that mm. people did. He just sort of, um, you know, took that as as as, as read. And and then he also didn't take into account income distribution. These were all averages. It was mm. the whole argument was in, in in conducted in terms of averages. And once you break up the averages then you immediately find out why certain things didn't work out the way he thought they would. And the other thing, of course, that Keynes uh, inherited, I suppose, from his you know, Cambridge and Eton education was this idea of money as a, as a means to an end, yeah. the end being a, a civilized and cultured life. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, and that was, of course, the ideal of all his Bloomsbury friends. Um, and he assumed that you know, as people in general got richer, so they'd aspire to this ideal. Yeah. Um, but what's happened is that, um, you know, that, that ideal of life has pretty much disappeared, leaving nothing, you know, uh, else but, you know, positional competition. Yes. Um, I mean, people, people of his class um, and, and um, his, his circle, they, they, had, they had quite uh, clear ideas of what a good life was. Mm. I certainly Bloomsbury did, the Cambridge civilization of his day did, I think the aristocrats did. Mm. So there were these ideas of what a good life was, and that you, but, but they already had enough um, in order to live that life. And so the problem, as they saw it, was, well, as societies got richer and richer, wouldn't more and more people have enough? Mm. Mm. But what they sort of didn't realize is that those ideals they had um, and those traditions of living they had were not not those of the majority. Yeah. And so um, you really got into a situation where people were getting richer and richer, but they really didn't have any, 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 any particular objects, purposes in life of the kind that yeah. Keynes and, and his circle did. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the goals of our book was to try and revive this idea of economic growth as a, as a, as a process with a purpose, yeah. you know, um, and, and to sort of give some content to that. That's so, right. So, so to come up with a substantive vision of, of the good life. Um, Made up of a number of elements. Yeah, which we, we, we sort of um, identified after, you know, reading a lot of, um, you know, previous thinkers from not just from Europe, but from all over the world. Um, and we, we realized there's actually quite a lot of agreement on this. Um, so uh, it's not just a matter of value uh, conflict. No. It's not yeah, it's not just, oh, well, this is your idea of what yeah. a good life is, but mine is completely different. In fact, we find out yeah. that the greatest minds of all times have actually thought much the same thing. Yeah, I mean, there are differences yeah. of emphasis, but, you know, it, you know, pretty much everyone agrees that, um, you know, health, for instance, is, is, is crucial to a good life, and that's the least controversial, I yeah. suppose, of the basic yeah. goods. Um, but also 
friendship, I mean, you know, um, relationships of love and trust. Um, uh, clearly, those are absolutely central. Um, security. Security is, uh, again, not so uncontroversial. Um, I think a lot of people yes. put security pretty high up. Um, harmony with nature is a more controversial one. Um, but this is um, really the idea that um, you need to, um, yeah, uh, live in some kind of relationship with with your sort of uh, natural surroundings. Okay, that doesn't mean that you have to live on the land, but you have to at least be in some sort of touch with nature. Um, and without worshiping nature. Yes, I mean it's it's not it's not a sort of ecocentric view. It's not um, uh, you know human beings remain at the centre of the picture. We're just saying part of the good life for man is living in harmony with nature. Yeah. Um, so it's not. Um, it's not sacrificial like a lot of environmental ethics is. Yeah. And of course, leisure. I mean, leisure is part of the good life. Um, I mean, it's, um, it's an essential um, element. And that is where the, uh, the aristocratic and, 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 and uh, Bloomsbury ideal mm -hmm. comes in uh, very, very strongly. Yeah. Um, and um, that's, the, that's the one I think people find almost hardest to no. accept, isn't it? Well, that's like, because the idea of leisure has become so degraded in our culture. I mean, people think of leisure as simply um, time off work, yeah. you know, time to sort of relax or sort of slob out. Um, and they've forgotten that the word leisure originally had quite a different meaning. Um, it meant activity that wasn't devoted to some external goal that was an end in itself. Yeah. But that activity could be very strenuous and demanding and creative. Um, it could be caring. Yeah, it, 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 there are lots yeah. of things, uh, but a lot of people, because they associate leisure with time off work, mm. um, rather than work as time off leisure, which is our our yeah. ideal in the end. They, they 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 think of it as just idleness. Yeah, and that's why the prospect of endless leisure fills them with dread, yeah. um, uh, or, or, or sort of nausea. I mean, they just see a you know a future of watching Big Brother. And doing nothing. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, that's of course not what we mean by leisure. And it, it's, it's, it's not what need happen, is it? Mm. Because that wasn't the way that the leisured classes of old spent their time. I mean, they didn't. I mean, of course, there some were lots of them. Of, did. Some of them did. And, and you've got mm. to accept that. Yeah. I mean, there were lots of dissolute mm. peers and sort of professors who never did any work because they had their colleges were well endowed and things like that. But that wasn't uh, that wasn't yeah. a universal rule, was yeah. it? I think you, yeah, we you have to have some faith that people <coughs> will you know find ways to occupy their leisure time in meaningful activity. Yeah, uh, without the, the, the spur of economic need. Yeah, um, yeah. If you read. Um, uh, you know the novels of Jane Austen. Her her, her gentry folk, uh, they don't have to work, but they occupy their time um, in, you know, organising balls or amateur yeah. theatricals or painting, playing the piano. Um, and there are hobbies of many many kinds. I mean, the trouble is, you know, trying to get that across. A lot of people say, "Oh, you're just elitist." Mm. I mean, you have a model of life which might fit a few leisured people, uh, cultivated people, but what are, what, are, what are the mass of people going to do? Well, they have to be also, education has to change. A lot of these, um, a lot of these people um, who did live what we would think of a good life in the past were edu ed actually educated to do so, weren't they? Whereas we're, most people yeah. today are be being trained for jobs. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, what we want is a more dem democratized version of what in the past only the aristocracy yeah. could enjoy, um, uh, and that's that's not elitist. I mean, yeah, we're taking our ideals from the elite, but we're, you know, trying to spread them more broadly. Yeah, I think that that's true. And then we have some proposals. Mm. We actually, when 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 people ask us, well, uh, how would you bring this about? We do have some ideas, don't we? I mean, I think the idea of a moral uh, a moral basis to, is is there, which is. Mm. The, the, the seven basic goods. That's the moral foundation. And if people um, are, um, are willing to accept that um, and act according, certain policies sort of follow from it. Yes, I mean, I, I think we, what we advocate is a, is a, is a mixture of sort of bottom-up and top-down yeah. action. So there has to be some sort of popular groundswell of opinion, um, but there also has to be some sort of, you know, 
legislation to yeah. encourage that. Well, the popular groundswell might also lead to yeah. the demand for legislation. Mm. It's not just self-help, although we're, we're very much in favor of self-help and localism of all kinds people doing their own thing and, and, and carving out their own areas of a good life. But we also think there's got to be some political impulse, for example, um, towards one of our proposals, which is um, a basic citizen's income. Mm. And that, c that can only be done by the state. Yes. And through, through the taxation yes. system, yes. a progressive consumption tax to reduce the pressure to consume. Yeah. And yeah, things yeah. of that kind. And the citizen's income, I mean, um, you know, there's a lot of confusion about this, but basically it would be a, a, a sum paid to all adult citizens. Um, Independent yes. of their position yeah. in the labour so market. It, yeah, irrespective of whether they're employed or unemployed. And the point would just be to give people more choice as to how much they worked or where they worked. Um, you know, it would, it would, it would you know, give, give ordinary people the kind of flexibility that in the past only Montiers yeah, yeah. enjoyed. And you couldn't start it at its full sort of living income standard. Mm. You'd build up to it. But this is a program which, which is a, a 20, 30, 50 year program. I mean, building mm. up to this idea. You can't, uh, you can't say, oh, well, tomorrow everyone's yeah. going to stop work yes. and we're going to give everyone yeah. a huge income. I mean, it's not going to work like that. It's going to be a transition to a different view of the aims yeah, of yeah. work and the and, aims of economic activity. And, 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 and the economic sort of fact that underlies all this is that, you know, um, is, is mechanization. I mean, machines are gradually making human labor redundant. Um, and, you know, w what we're saying is that the rational response to that is to try and all shorten our hours of work, yeah. rather than insist that, you know, everyone work an eight-hour day, which will simply lead to more and more unemployment. Yeah, or more and more sort of... Underemployment, yeah. Underemployment. Yeah. And underemployment can yeah. actually take the form of um, a not working on the job. Mm. I mean, there was a huge amount of underemployment in the old Soviet Union. Everyone pretended to work. And what was the phrase? We pretend to work, you pretend to pay us. Yes. But, but of course, a lot of that's happening in our societies. Mm. People actually are unemployed on the job. Um, or they're, 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 they're doing mm. the job. I mean, I don't think all of them, but there are some, uh, quite a yes. few. Um, so we don't want yeah. that. I mean, we want, we want this to happen openly mm. and in the light of a different, different um, uh, appreciation of the value of GDP. GDP is a means, not an end, um, and, and so on. So uh, I think... Um, um, what we hope our book will, 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 will be is a contribution to that rethinking of the ends of economic activity um, and uh, in, 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 ex in exactly the way that um, uh, most of the, of the great philosophers and even economists of the time did think of it. Yeah. It wasn't an end in itself, yeah. growth. Yeah, and the trouble is that um, in the economics profession now, um, uh, has, has simply shelved morality. It doesn't ask about the ends of life. Yeah. Um, it uh, treats uh, wants as given, as yeah. the sl slogan goes, and it, it simply asks about the most efficient means to achieve those ends. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're, we're really calling for a kind of synthesis of uh, philosophy, economics, uh, and, 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 and ethics. Um, yeah. And insofar as economics thinks it's got a moral purpose, it's sort of um, exhausted by the idea of lifting people out of poverty. Mm. I mean, I think that if an economist would say, well, what do you think you're doing? What do you think economics mm. is contributing to the, the well-being of humanity? They, an economist might say, well, we're, 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 we're suggesting the most efficient uh, means for people to escape from poverty. But then they take GDP yeah. um, as a proxy of that. And what's more, they also have no um, end point because um, you, you know, poverty is relative. So in a way, where, where does taking people out of poverty ever, ever, ever end? Well, the goal of lifting people out of poverty makes sense in poor countries yeah. where, where you can sort of shelve the question of ultimate purposes yeah. because you, know, the, you, know, you have a lot of people who are actually starving. But I mean, where you know, people aren't um, poor in an absolute sense, 
you know, the question of the ends of life becomes yeah. a really pressing one. It does, but then you can evade it the whole time by inventing relative poverty. Mm. People are always going to be poor relative to yes. someone else, unless you have absolute equality of income, mm. which is impossible in any way we don't advocate. So you can't just say, um, you know, um, our aim is re uh, alleviating poverty. Um, uh, as, as a moral, that's yeah. not a self-sufficient, yeah. that's not a sufficient yeah. moral principle.